Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to the theory aspect for data analysis using Excel. And firstly, we just introduce you to data. What is data? And the types of data. I want to tell you that data is an individual facts. There are statistics, there are items of information. They are often numeric. They are often numeric in a more technical sense. Data is a set of values. Yeah. It can be quantitative and it can be qualitative variables. Data as I used, like I said earlier, they are, you find data analysis in every sector, in every organization, no matter what they are doing. You will find a data analyst, or you will find data. That's why in our right, so we say data as I use in scientific research, of course, business management, finance, government, everywhere, everywhere. Data are everywhere. Data are virtually every, in every other form of human organization activity. Straight, but just to be, be going straight to the point, as for me, I always prefer practical. Where we practicalize it, but truly, this is also very important. You'll be you'll be seeing sometimes there that you really need to understand before you come across practical aspects. So, what are the types of data? We have the qualitative data, and we have the quantitative data. Let's check qualitative data. In very simple qualitative data, they depict descriptions that may be observed. But cannot be computed. Qualitative data cannot be computed. They cannot be calculated. Like it is said earlier, they defeat descriptions. They defeat descriptions. For example, data on attributes such as, as intelligence, honest, wisdom, cleanliness, creativity, yes or no, good, very good, average, poor. Why quantitative data they are numerical? They are numerically represented. They can be calculated. They can be calculated. Calculations can be performed on them. Unlike qualitative data, as calculations cannot be performed on them. They cannot be computed. But for quantitative data, they are numbers in short. They are numerically represented, and they can be calculated. Let's look at our diagram. We we'll check our diagram: qualitative data versus quantitative data. You see. Qualitative data is their words, their description of a value of a person or a thing. Why quantitative data are numerical? They are not by graph. They are numerically represented. They are numerically represented. Let's let's check this diagram as well. Just to because truly you need to get this. Because as you go to your practical, you be, you will have to take decisions based on this. There are data you have to represent with luminal data. There are data you will have to represent with ordinary data. Why there are data you have to represent with scale, that is discrete and continuous data. So if you don't get it right here, truly it will affect your results. If you don't get it right here, it will affect your data formatting. If you don't get it right here, it will affect your data entry. For those that will be venturing into SPSS software, you will discover that you need nominal and ordinary data. You need to know the difference. I have a training. At the moment, I remember when she was when we were learning this, she had to write it down. She had to write it down because if you do try an error here and you move forward, by the time you'll be needing your crafts and your results, you won't get what you need. And do you know the meaning of that? You have to come back, you have to go back to your data entry section. And that means you are starting afresh. So it's it will waste your time. It's a whole lot. So it is better you get it right. So she she doesn't even Think twice. Once it gets to this level, she just gets a, a notebook and she just draw it. She pick the right one. So our advice, if if you take you to just this down, why not? Please go ahead. So for qualitative data, we have the nominal data, we have the ordinal data. Yes, we have the nominal data and we have the ordinal data. For nominal data, don't forget qualitative are description. They they, they describe a person itself. So, qualitative data are divided into two. We have the nominal data and we have the ordinal data. Under nominal data, we have the gender, we have the air color, we have the ethnicity. You see some questions, some questionnaires where they ask your age, 
they ask for ethnicity they ask for so many things where for ordinary data we talk about first second third talk about letter a b c let's give an illustration let's talk let's say um uh, a questionnaire is given and they ask okay let's say a uh, like family planning and the the questions are like how do you know about family planning and they're like option a through social media option b through my friend option c in the clinic where i did my antimatter now these options are not available for data entry but you can code this yes some people say ah coding i don't mean me i really don't like coding but really coding is interesting coding is sweet code sweet yes coding is sweet so in this sense now you can say option a i i code it as one option b i code it i code it as two that's second option c i code it as c and without you are able to go ahead with your analysis why ordinary data can also be letter a b c it can also represent your answers your response with option a option b option all you need to, to do is to code it economic status as well just as low medium high you can use some information informations as well to code this now let's come to quantitative data like we said earlier they are numerically represented that's one they can be calculated and they can be computed now let's see this quantitative data are divided into two one is discrete data the second is continuous data yes now you already know quantitative is number 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 so under the discrete data where the number of students in a class number the number of workers in a company number the number of home runs in a baseball game number why the continuous data for those that will be venturing fully into excel this as uh, these are things you will be coming across very often why continuous data is the height of children as well number the square footage of two bedroom house number the speed of cars number yes so the quantitative is numerical why qualitative is descriptive i hope you get that i hope you understand so let's just go to our next slide which is data collection that is sourcing for data how do we source for data how do we get our data what are the processes of getting our data the first source for data is primary data i want to tell you the primary data are collected for the first time they are pure they are collected for the first time by an investigator for a specific purpose you don't just go out there and say i want to collect this i want to get it and you don't have a reason you don't have a purpose why you want to get the data there must be a specific purpose so primary data are pure why do we say they are pure it's because no statistical operations have been performed on them true no statistical they are pure it is your own you went out by yourself you share the question yes you and you are coming back with them so they are pure an example of a primary data is a student questionnaire you 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 you, you have the problem you set the question to suit the problem and then you go out to get the answer you share the questionnaire so an example of a primary data is student questionnaire why the second source the source of data is primary data and so the secondary data here's the first one is primary data why the second one is secondary data secondary data are data that are sourced from some way, someone that has originally collected this please this is someone not some place from someone that has originally collected it you get it from someone that has already originally collected this this means that this kind of data has already been collected by some researcher yes by some investigators in the past and I won't tell you that these data that they can be they, can, they might be impure depending on the statistical operations that has been done on them let's assume this kind of data has gotten into someone that cannot manage data well it has been scattered there are so many columns that are empty already it will affect results it will, it will affect results a lot so most time primary data is are the the secondary data is so and all but depending on who is who the uh, secondary data is coming from let's go to our next slide yes let's just look at this diagram data data sources 
So primary data, secondary data, where do we get a, how do we get our primary data, doctor to surveys, student tests, personal interviews, why for secondary data we have the internet, books, and newspaper. If you look at the dot to dot survey, people that share uh, forms, please help us fill this form. Students that go about, please let me fill this questionnaire, let me check it, let me say your whole view have all this and personal interview. Why for secondary data, you can get information on internet, their secondary data. Some of us will go online, we do research and we get information. Those information, their data, yes, their data, their, their secondary data, books like textbooks and all that. We get information from all these things. Information is data, like we explained earlier. They are they are item they are itemized data information. So also in newspaper you get when we read newspaper we get num the number of people that died in this, the number of people that succeeded, number of people that graduated. So newspaper also give data. So but uh, these are secondary data. Now straight up, let's go into data entry data entry what is data entry is just short data entry is a job where an employee inputs data into a computer let's think about let's take for example mtn you know is now that mtn you go you go and you want to register your sim and you just input your uh, information on system recently when technology came and they are able to before you fill form, imagine like ten thousand, hundred thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people they register for form. There is need for data entry. It will be needed. You will. They will need to co input those information into a computer. They will need to yeah input the data into a computer. So the work of the data entry generally is people come. Please, some people they will even snap. I remember when I was freelancing. You get a freelancing job, and data entry must not necessarily be into a, you are you are inputting into a into a table. I remember that job. Then they snapped uh, a document, yes, like textbook. They snap it with um, with phone, and then you will type it out into Microsoft Word, and then you send to them. But don't forget, sometimes you know there are some software, there are some applications that when you when when it is a picture, they are able to help you convert it into Word. Into like Microsoft Word, it's something that you can edit. But this one, the way it is written, now the kind of information you can't convert it. And that's why some of these big data organizations they need someone to help them do data entry, and it's also lucrative. So data entry basically is where an employee input data into a computer from forms, yeah, from forms or other non-electronic forms of data. Today. Many online data entry jobs available require employees to enter the data into an online database. You see, even today, even today, data entry job is still very, very much lucrative. Now, straight, let's go into introduction to data formatting in Excel. I won't spend much time here, but I need you to know that after collecting, your, well, after going out with your questionnaire and you've gotten your question and you've entered it into your system. The next thing to do is to format the information. You even Microsoft Word, you format it, Excel, you format. So, what do you do when you format a document? First thing is that you filter it. You, you depending on what, one thing filter helps you to do is it helps you manipulate your, doc, uh, your data the way you want it. It helps you, you can decide to just cut a portion of the data to use it for something, cut another portion. So, Data filtering it helps you manipulate. It helps you um chill out gyrate on your data here. It helps you to do whatsoever it is you want to do with your data. While the second, the second uh, formatting is data claiming. Really, this is a place I would like to spend few moments because if you don't clean your data well, the outcome of your analysis will be poor. If you don't clean your data well, it's the results and don't forget data analysts are they can either make or mar an organization because they are the one that will tell an organization do this don't do this add this so parameter you 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 get a data and you don't you didn't clean it well you didn't work on the data you didn't format the uh, the data well and you 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 went ahead you analyzed the data and at the end of the day you give them the results, oh, this is the result, and they are like, please interpret it, and you interpret, oh, 
this year actually you, you sold um bicycle very bicycles very well the the best of your sales is on bicycle so we advise that next year you bring in more bicycles uh, yeah cars didn't really move trailers didn't really move the bicycle a lot of people came in meanwhile you've missed something you didn't clean something you didn't erase something you didn't filter it you didn't sort it at the end of the day you've advised the organization that okay your clients that okay do this and maybe the following year and maybe because your client now he only has opportunity to bring it to import this goods once in a year and he has gone ahead to import a lot of bicycles and at the end people kept coming we need cars we need cars we need cars and you're like ah but my analyst said my best sales last year was bicycle why is it that people are and he, he, he didn't analyze based on just one year he analyzed based on his years back that the organization has been so your advice your results either make or marry because imagine what that businessman will have to face if at the end of the year the 80 percent of the bicycle imported are still there and people and he has record of people coming for cars and he didn't have and maybe he needs to do second hand sales by going to someone else bring car let me and i have a customer that wants to buy a car or he will tell them i don't have and he, he take inventory of these things and he didn't he, he won't be pleased with you and apart from he not being pleased with you it also affects your career because one there won't be good uh, reports concerning your order so it is very important to claim data one reason for claiming data is to remove observations that might contain errors or are undesirable for analysis i've said a lot about data claiming it is very very important if you don't claim your data well it will affect the results so as we analyze the documents as we analyze the data let's try our best to claim them well the third um, format the third one is sorting sorting is a process of arranging data into meaningful order into meaningful order so that you can analyze it more effectively when you're able to sort out i would i would love to give an illustration here when you're able to sort your data you don't you don't waste time looking for something let's assume you have 10,000 or let's say 100,000 data on your system a big data and you need an information on and the number of sales that was made on okay and let's say the data started since 20, 2000, uh, 2002 to 20, uh, 2021 yes and let's say you need to know the sales that was made may 2010 you won't be strolling down with your remote and strolling down and strolling down and you are just going like that instead of doing that and wasting your time you just sort don't worry as we're going through our practical tomorrow you see how beautiful these things are just click on something and before you know you are sorted and you just click me you pick 2010 and your result is out immediately why did we why are we inputting this information to computer is to have immediate access to our information so sorting sort test data into alphabetical order sort numeric sort and sort numeric data into into numerical order group sort data to many levels for example you can sort on city within city within months within you so it takes you deep 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 you can even go as day yes day in the month so that is what sorting can do it's, it's very lucrative and sorry i said lucrative it's very um helpful yes it's very helpful and it leads you straight to the point it takes you straight to where you really want to want to get your information right now we are coming to data analysis what are the process when you want to analyze what are the things what are the two how where do you start from what are the process there are five keys there are key, uh, five key stage to analyzing your data and instead of i know i've spoken so well about this already you identify the problem after identifying the problem you go out you see the, with, between this place and this place now is that period where you go out you prepare your you you prepare your questionnaire and then the next thing is you go out to collect the information you share your questionnaires or form or whatever it is you're going out to you to collect your information it can be a radio it can be a phone it can be a recorder whatsoever it is you are going out to collect your information with 
thereafter between this collect and claim again is the entry level you enter your information into either a system into whatever software you want to use either excel either sps sql python whatever it is you want to use you 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 enter it and then you come to claim you claim your data I, I, it's not long ago i just spoke about this claim please make sure you claim your data please make sure you go through your data don't just jump on a data and just say i want to analyze format your data well from claiming you now analyze your information now you are you are you are set to you know that you've done the right thing you analyze from analyzing you now interpret that's why you you advise don't do this do this oh you, you are not advising the interpreting you're only telling them okay this is what happened in last year you sold this according to the graph i have here last year you sold this this year you did this so that is just basically what you are telling them in interpret let's go essential types of data analysis method what are the types what are the essentials one this also i'll just go to this i'll just come to this diagram types of data analysis we have the descriptive we have the diagnostic we have the predictive we have the prescriptive yes these are the four major there are five but these are the four major let's go up and discover that there are actually five we have the descriptive this what happened exactly how did this happen what happened this this point is the starting point to any analytic reflection you don't just jump on the data when you don't even know the problem when you don't know what actually happened for data analysts i want to tell you that most time a data analyst gets the uh, data on the table already it, the work of a data analyst is just to analyze like i told like i said this morning already a data entry the data entry skill is different from the data, data analysis skill data entry skill is a part of data engineering and there is an, an umbrella covering them and that is data scientist or is under data scientists we now have data engineer we have data analysts and we have other bodies so in an organization a data organization a data organization we have data analysts, they have data analysts they have data engineer they have other people they have data entry they have all that so for a data analyst now what happened a table is presented before you already with information the, the information that stabilized already what happened the next thing to know is how to explore the data relationship why did it happen why did it happen you begin to diagnose what what did they do that made this to happen how did they do it that this eventually happened so you need to um know what why it happened the next thing is what will happen if we do this 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 deals with artificial intelligence it deals with machine learning what will happen and then how will it happen all this is certainly not difficult it's still in the process of you analyzing by the time you get graphs by the time you begin to work on the private table you begin to you begin to see so many things then you understand okay this is why this happened this is why this happened this is why that happened so you be uh, you begin to think analysts are critical thinkers data analysts to be precise they are critical thinkers so you think for an organization you think for your clients because the, the reason why they employ you is to help them move the organization forward so you begin to think how will it happen and that is the prescriptive so basically this why what happened why did it happen what will happen what is like i said earlier everything we touch there we'll be practicalizing it tomorrow we start it we start with what is the problem we want to solve from what is the problem we want to solve we come into our questionnaire our questionnaire will be viewed to us then we enter we just just to practicalize we just enter four questions and all that then we come with a prepared question uh, question question uh, table already then we, we do table formatting from there we analyze and then we discuss our results just short as that and then money is here i want to show us something quickly uh, about what our data what a uh, data on excel looks like uh,
I would like to show you big data and small data. Yes, I would like to show you big data. Yes, when you look at this, when you look at this, this is the data. This is an organization that has been selling accessory. That has been selling accessory bags, clothing since 2011 to 2016. Now he wants to know the revenue he makes per year. And again, he wants to know this is revenue he makes per year. Then revenue is all together that he makes on accessory, on bags, on clothing for the past years that he started. Yes, then this analyzes the countries that patronize him. Australia, Canada, France, Germany. This is a small data just to analyze. And if you look at this, it's not really detailed. There's no month, there's no day. You understand? It's only year we have. And all we talk about is the revenue. You can see Excel. Excel analyzed based on numbers. Revenue. What are we gaining? What are we generating? This is a small data. I would like to also show you what a big data looks like. This is a big data. Let me take you to the end of this data. You see the end of the data. The data is 113,037 respondents. So for this person, now, he has customers. The number of his customers that he analyzed their information is 113,037 customers. And these are the things they bought. We have United States, we have Germany, we have countries of people. We, we have customer gender, we have country, we have state, we have product category, we have subcategory, we have product. But let me tell you, the, what Excel needs more is this revenue. And what a businessman needs eh, is the money he's making more. The money that is coming in, how he's making it, how he can move forward truly. When an organization wants to analyze, well, okay, they want to analyze the, their clients, how their clients are being satisfied and all that. So this is it. I, I would like to also show you a little about pivot table. This is what a pivot table looks like. This is you, you, you express this is you, you, you add the, your clients to come up with graphs, graphs, countries, revenues. We, we are looking at this, you see. Numbers, numbers, numbers. This with this now, can someone just tell me the, the outcome of this? This is quantitative data, right? Numbers, numbers. So, this is just the end of our training of our theory aspect. Yes, our theory aspect for for Excel. Yeah, for Excel. Thank you very much for listening. It's been nice times. Bye.